Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time it's going to be with True King Yang Zings yet again. This is a bit more of a revised list. I've been doing quite a bit of playtesting with this deck, becoming more familiar with it, and finding more and more things that I like about it. And one of the things is that I actually like the concept of playing Desires in a deck that is more than 40 cards. This build actually might end up going all the way to 48, 50 cards, because this deck is actually so inherently like just consistent because of how like easy it is to access literally everything because of the fact that this field spell is such a good card. Now there are definitely more cards that can be played in the deck, like you know, you could splash copies of the uh, True King, like spell and trap support, but ultimately I'm just familiarizing myself with the deck as it stands as you see it on paper. Now, like I said, there have been some minor tweaks to it, but ultimately I have been looking at you guys' suggestions from the comment section of the previous video and definitely keep those coming. One of the things that I'm very kind of hard set on is that I really don't like Magma Dragon in this specific deck. The, uh, the pure variant with like this more True King focused definitely makes a huge like use out of Magma Dragon, but this build is a lot more combo oriented and that restriction that it gives you, that hard restriction on you can only summon worms for the rest of the turn, is actually kind of crippling. It actually does quite a lot to hinder the game plan of this deck uh, quite a bit because all of these synchros are basically on the game plan for any specific turn. And ultimately, if you're not able to summon anything but worms, it cuts you off from a rather large portion of this, as well as a good chunk of uh, OTK potential with things like Chamber Rider, and being able to just do things like go uh, Ding Long plus True King into a Leo to continue your combo plays. There's a lot of things that it just sort of hinders, although I'm not going to argue against it being good, because it is definitely a very solid card and well-rounded for this archetype and for this theme, but ultimately, like I said, I think it's more, like, just truly, like, it truly shines in the pure True King deck, and not the Yang Zing hybrid, I don't think. I think this deck is very much something where you want to focus on things like Mare Mare, because this card is actually just incredibly powerful for the combo potentials that it allows you to make, with, you know, just seeing lots of cards. Like I said, you can go into Deng Long, into Star's Charge Warrior, into Formula Synchron, off of a single Mare Mare summon, and that lets you see three new cards and make Crystal Wing. And that's actually just really good. And it also sets a Chi Win up in Grave as well, so that's actually a resource as well. Uh, things to consider. But anyway, that is enough rambling on for this part of the video. This is the build, as you see, that I'm going to be playing in this video. Let me know what your suggestions are in the comments below, as always, as I've already said. And ultimately, let's just see how this deck fares against the matchup of the day, shall we? Let's see how it plays in its current form and see if we can gain any more information from it, shall we? Let's just hop straight into the first game. Alright, so going into the first game, I go first because I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, and my opening hand is very good with Mare Mare and two copies of the Field Spell as well as Soul Charge. Now, opening Mare Mare is actually very good because it expedites the process of getting it onto the board. As you see here, I use the first Field Spell to pop it out of my hand, adding the Earth True King, and then using the second Field Spell to pop the Earth True King and search a different named True King, and then the Earth True King brings back the Mare Mare. And so, you can use Mare Mare to bring out the three tokens and do the play that I've talked about in previous videos, where you just go into Ding Long, add a card, start a Charge Warrior, draw a card, get Chi Win out of the deck, and then Synchro with your last token into a Formula Synchron, and then you go into Crystal Wing. It's a, it's a very nice little push, and it allows you to see a lot of cards in a very sort of efficient and very good manner. Now, my ending board, I Soul Charge for one just because I want to make the VFD, and I've also got access to nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, which allows me to make a Herald of the Arc Light that is not killable by battle during my opponent's turn. So, I've got VFD on board, and I actually haven't had to use its effect. I just decided not to do anything for that matter, because I'd rather just use the Crystal Wing to negate something, and then VFD. Um, it's a very interesting sort of, uh, sort of play line, but because this is Zodiac Metal Foes, and I know this, I know that I want to prevent both Bambuku's, and the uh, Zodiac engine from being able to trigger, and that's two different attributes, so I definitely wanted to make that, you know, play happen. But during my next turn, I'm capable of just continuing my play line, being able to make another Deng Long. Uh, I, unfortunately, I misplay here. I forgot to use VFD's effect to alter my opponent's monster to a wind attribute before I activated the wind true king in hand, making me have to destroy my crystal wing. But it's ultimately fine, because at this point, my engine is very, very much rolling. Its engine is moving and it's still capable of putting out tons of damage as well as clearing boards with Boxia then, uh, and using the, uh, the True King to, uh, or the VFD to use the Fire True King to tribute my opponent's Metal Foe, or destroy it rather, to some of my Fire True King from hand and just use it as, a, as an OTK engine essentially. But 
Going into the second game, my opponent gets to start, and he opens with a Mole Morat, and I don't know why he sent Viper to the grave there. I think it was just a misclick, uh, but it ultimately doesn't end up mattering because he doesn't want to search Viper off the Bullhorn anyway. He wants to search for Dragoons of Draconia to be a scale, and he's able to go into a Drancia and an Emerald, drawing a card, getting another Metal Foe's name, and so he just starts setting up a Pendulum Scale sort of shenanigans. The same old, same old thing with Metal Foes, being able to pop your scales and set all the cards that you want. Now he goes into a Metal Foes Fusion, Metal Foes Combination, full Metal Foes Fusion, and then when he finally sets his scale, he Pendulums out Volflame, Dragoons of Draconia, and a Steelin, and then fuses into Mithrilium, leaving the Volflame on the board, and then popping other cards using his scales, and his newly drawn Painful Decision gets him a Gold Driver, and he ends his turn with a set Dimension Barrier and two full Metal Foes Fusions with two Metal Foes Combinations set with a very live play to make, uh, to make you know, full Metal Foes Alkahist and other sorts of options. Now, I Twin Twister to try and get rid of one of the full Metal Foes Fusions and force it, and I end up, you know, activating it for him after he changes the barrier, and he goes into a Ori Halk with combination to bring back the Mithrilium, and Mithrilium brings back his uh, gold driver, and then he just does more fusion plays during my turn. Um, he uses Full Metaphose Fusion in response to my Jowtu being summoned, and then chains Drancia so that Drancia is chain link 2 and destroys my Jowtu so that it does not float. It makes my Jowtu miss timing. That was a very neat little interaction, a very smart play that ends up happening there, but he's able to bounce one of my back rows back with the one Mithrilium that's already established on the board, and then fuse away with Ori Halk to bake, uh, to make my, uh, other back row go to the graveyard, be sent to the graveyard of Warhouse Grave Effect, and ultimately this game is just not winnable for me in any way, shape, or form. Uh, he just, he uses his Zodiac engine that he just recycled, he pops his Digesto Emerald so that he can make another one and shuffle back the Emerald, thus making his engine essentially infinite. He makes another Drancia, and he has an OTK here even though he did summon the Drancia in defense position, which is a little bit of a misplay. Minor misplay, but it didn't really punish him for it the same way I didn't get punished game one by popping my own Crystal Wing. But going into the third game, I get to start and I have three of the field spell. I don't understand how I keep drawing so many of these field spells when it's only at six and I can't draw a ravine like to save my life when I'm trying to play Dragoon Ace. I don't understand. It's only five versus six and I usually play smaller deck counts in the Dragoon variants that I play, but I just cannot see ravine. I find that very interesting. But anyway. I'm able to start with another Mare Mare play because I'm able to, you know, pop cards, get the Mare Mare in circulation, and then pop the Earth the True King with the Mare Mare out of my hand for the Water True King, and, you know, just being able to fulfill the summoning conditions for basically a Crystal Wing while seeing three new cards. It's a very high impact, like, very easy play, and I really like it. Uh, now, Crystal Wing is definitely not the card you have to go for. You can go for other cards, like, say, Stardust. You can go for. Uh, different things. The only thing you're really kind of restricted in not making is you can't really go into a Boxia and have the play line at its max because of the fact that it is a formula and it is a Star's Charge Warrior. Although you could play something like Metaphys Horus and you could then summon a Jowtu out of your deck and retain the token to pop for True Kings. There's definitely options there. But uh, my entire ending board is capable of just making Herald of the Arclight, VFD, and Crystal Wing and that's just very strong. I'm not allowing my opponent to play. And so I use VFD to call Wind because I realize, like, why don't I just call Wind so that he can't activate his Bambukus? Um, like, and then I'll just use the Crystal Wing to negate whatever Zodiac thing happens. Like, I realize mid-match that there's a very correct way to be doing this, and it's to just basically call whatever attribute I don't want to deal with, and in this case, it is Wind because I can't destroy the Bambuku with the uh, Crystal Wing or Kieran. If he just pendulums a Kieran straight out, um, I'm not going to be able to destroy it with the Crystal Wing. It's going to be a recurring threat that I'm going to have to deal with, and so I'd rather just not allow it to activate, and that's why I call Wind, and also that just means the Terra Top can't activate either, and so it, was just, it just seemed the smartest play to uh, to call Wind, but in the next game, my opponent went first, and he opened very weak. Uh, it's a very weak opener from him, and I'm just capable, capable of capitalizing on it. Now, I'm not really sure where my end game is trying to go. I just know that those back row usually aren't real, or if they are real, it's something like Dimension Barrier, because I know this deck only plays Dimension Barrier as a trap, and so I just hold the Twin Twister because it just, it makes no sense to try and do anything uh, without uh, doing something uh, to a card that's chainable or a card that can actually, you know, do searching. But, so I'm able to make Leo and make a developed board, and then I Twin Twister on his turn when he tries to pop combination to get more monsters in circulation, and he just scoops from there. It's just, it's not something he wants to deal with. And so going into the last game, he gets to start, and he opens with Terra Top. Here comes Mr. Broken. 
So, Terratop into Invoker, into Molmorat, into Bullhorn, in, or Wildbow, into Tigris, into Bullhorn, into Drancia, getting your Molmorats on the board. Now, he had one in hand, so he doesn't end up taking a minus there, summoning it from hand. But ultimately, it's not really that big of an issue. Well, not really a minus, just not an additional plus on top of what he already had. But he does have scales. He does have a Bambuku, which a Bambuku alongside a Terratop is an incredible opening. Because even though he's not really able to do a lot of Metal Foes plays here, he's capable of putting Drancia and Kieran on the board with a full field of monsters and three sets. And so I use Desires, and I'm just like, you know what? I've got a Twin Twister and see what these cards are. If it's, if it's cards I don't want to deal with then it's definitely something I need to get rid of, and ultimately, I'm just not able to do any plays in general because of the Drancia and because of the Kirin. Like, the Drancia being capable of popping my monster is the main thing that was the problem there, is that I try to normal summon my BN and reveal my Earth True King, and he uses Drancia as Chainlink 2 to pop my Earth uh, Yang Zing, my BN, and then my Earth True King can't destroy anything, so it can't resolve, and since it was Chainlink 2 destroyed off of the Drancia, the beyond misses timing to float so I literally can't activate any cards in my hand at this point and I just lose from there but overall I think that was a good sample size a good set of games I'm definitely learning a lot more about this deck and I'm definitely tweaking the build a bit by bit as I go all I know is that I don't really like magma dragon in this sort of deck just because of the hard restriction that it gives uh, on only summoning worms for this sort of turn is actually pretty relevant because your play strings including like mare mare and things like that are very extensive in terms of what you do and so there is a there is that as a factor, but ultimately it may find its way in. But I just think that card is more relegating like relegatable towards like pure variants, like variants that are more focused on the big dudes and not comboing out with little things because of the capabilities of the big guys. So there is that. But anyway, give me some uh, thoughts and suggestions in the comments down below as uh, per always, and we'll see where we can go from there. I'm definitely becoming a lot more familiar with this deck, and I really like it. The more and more I'm playing it, I'm liking it more and more and more because of how just like fluid and flexible the deck is but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and like i said any suggestions leave them in the comments down below the only thing i basically say is that i just don't like magma dragon i've tested the card a lot and i don't really particularly like it but if you liked this video definitely be sure to like and subscribe it helps me out a ton it helps the channel and community within it grow check out the links on screen to other videos and maybe go check out my channel to find more videos you might also like there's a thousand plus videos over there so if you can find something that you like amongst them or rather if you can't find something you like amongst them i would be very very surprised but as i already said thanks for watching thank you for your time as usual and take care guys i'll see you in the next video